guys welcome back to my channel welcome to a new and exciting video my name is Chioma I'm a Nigerian youtuber who currently moved to the UK as a master's student I film videos about beauty fashion lifestyle family vlogs and a couple of other exciting stuff so you might want to click on the subscribe button to join my amazing family okay so the last video I did about relocating to the UK I asked you guys to come to me with any questions at all, anything relating to um, moving to the UK as a student, a master student, of course. And some of you actually came through with some questions. And trust me, most of the questions were basically around this topic that I'm, I'm, that I'm about to talk about today. So that's why I decided to make this like a separate video. If this is something that you would love to see, then please keep on watch it so i'm going to be as transparent as possible and you might also want to have like a paper and a pen with you because there's going to be a lot of jotting down i'm going to talk off my head because not to toot my horns but I'm very intelligent okay and I still remember everything like every process but if I forget anything I will probably just leave it on the screen but yeah just come with your have your paper and your pen with you while we go into the video so let's dive in yeah <laughs> okay so first things first when applying to the UK or before you go into your application uh, the first thing you would want you might want to do is to pray to God Mm -hmm. yeah might want to involve god because that's what i did and i'm just going to be telling you my own process i'm going to be talking from my own process so yeah first step is involving god and asking god if this is actually what he wants for you because trust me if you're going to be doing anything else outside of what god wants for you i don't know but i would advise that you pray to god and ask god if relocating from your current country is actually what he wants for you and then the next step you go ahead to check for schools right so when i was applying to schools i applied to 10 schools in total yeah um, i i applied to uni of chest university of chester i applied to university of derby which i'm which i currently am attending right now i applied to University of Dundee, I applied to York St. John, a couple of other universities, right? And when I was applying to these schools, I asked myself that, okay, if you gain admission in any of these schools now and you cannot afford to pay this, the fees, how are you going to cope? So the next thing I did, of all the schools I applied to, I went ahead to check which had, which of the schools had the best payment plan and maybe the best deposit but i didn't really look out for the best initial deposit because at the time we applied to the school we could afford to pay at least up to four thousand pounds for initial deposit and i knew that that was like the average for what most schools were taking for initial deposit so but i was like really 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 concerned about the payment plan for the other part of the school fees that we were going to pay when we get to the uk so yeah those were like that was like the number one criteria for me when i was choosing a school so after applying to different schools trust me uk schools don't take time in less than three weeks or two weeks you must have heard from at least four schools out of the 10 schools that you're applying to right you must have heard from at least four schools so when you want to apply to the to a university you you, the documents there are some documents that are needed to apply for masters in universities outside of nigeria you're going to need your cv you're going to need your personal statements you're going to need two reference letters one academic reference letter and one professional reference you're going to need your degree certificate you're going to need your bsc certificate uh, I don't, I'm sure that there are some schools that take HND. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the name of the schools, but I'm sure that there are like two or three schools that accept HND holders. And then, yeah, I think those are like the major things that you would need to apply for these schools. And uh, yeah, when you go ahead to apply, then you hold on for a response from the school. When you get a response from the school, 
you will either get a conditional offer or an unconditional offer a conditional offer uh, basically states that you have the admission but you need to provide an outstanding document while an unconditional offer states that you have the admission already like you don't need to provide any other documents just go ahead and um, pay your initial deposit so which takes me to the next step which is payment of your initial deposit for my school initial deposit was three thousand pounds that's that was about i used form a to pay my school fees so that was about uh 1.6 something million naira yeah let me just say 1.670 1 million 670 thousand naira that was what i paid for initial deposit so I'm not sure how much other schools will take, but I know that there's some schools that take 1,000 1, pounds as deposit. There's some schools that take 2,000. There's some schools that take three, four. But my school requested for 3,000 pounds as initial deposit, and that was what we paid. After we paid for initial deposit, then we went for medicals. Now, this medicals is what they call the tuberculosis test. It is very important for you to do your tuberculosis test. Some people go ahead to do their tuberculosis test like maybe a few days to visa application. But we did our own tuberculosis test really early now. So you have to do whatever works for you because tuberculosis test is something that you will go for and get the results that same day. Right? So you can go for your tuberculosis test anytime. But you're going to be you're going to be needing that. And for that, we paid 57800 if i'm not forgetting if I, if I or if i'm not mistaken yeah we paid 57800 naira per person but if you are going with your children the children are going to pay about 21 or 27000 i'm not quite sure but yeah if like i said if i'm not correct about something i'll just put the correct number on the screen so that you can see it but yeah so we did our tuberculosis test so that's like the next thing that you might need to do then after doing the tuberculosis test you go ahead and start building your proof of fund this is where the major work starts all right so there are some schools that there's something that every school gives right it's called cas that is the confirmation of acceptance of acceptance for study this cas is what you must use to apply for your visa you cannot apply for your visa as an international student without your CAS. So you must have your CAS to apply for your visa. Now, some schools that request for your statement of account before they give you CAS. This statement of account, right? You should have the balance of your school fees and the money, the, the money you're going to be spending as living expense for the next nine months, okay? So I'm talking, this video is for people who are applying as single applicants because that was how I came. Initially, we were supposed to come as a family, but my husband couldn't come. So I came as a single, right? Although in my visa application, I had already stated my husband's name. I'm digressing, but I'm still going to go back. Don't worry. I stated my husband's name so that whenever he applies, they will definitely give him his visa. But I came in as a single person. So for people who are coming as a family, and you want to use one person's account for proof of fund you will need to put everybody's money in their account which state which means that you're putting the after paying your initial deposit you're putting the balance of your school fees and living expense for you for the next nine months living expense for each member of your family for the next nine months i'm going to put the living expense on the screen so that and i'm going to put like there's a way to calculate it so i'm going to actually put it on the screen for you to see right because i think that's like the easiest way for you to understand this proof of fund part but your proof of fund basically is the balance of your school fees plus your living expense plus your dependents living expense if you're not going with anybody if you're going alone your proof of fund is the balance of your school fees and your living expense for the next nine months now in UK, if you're staying in London and you're staying outside London, you cannot have the same living expense. So there's, there's like a difference. There's a living expense for London and there's a living expense for people staying outside of London. So you check your school and you know where your school is, where your school is 
and that is how you know how to calculate your proof of funds. For instance, my school fees, for example, let me say it's ten thousand pounds. It's not, but I'm just using that as an instance, right? Let's assume my school fees is ten thousand pounds, and I pay three thousand as deposits. The remaining school fees is going to be seven thousand pounds. Now, the seven thousand pounds plus my living expense for the next nine months is what will make up my proof of fund. Right. So I think that is like the best way to break it down. Okay. So you might want to start building your proof of fund after doing your medicals and paying your deposits because this is what you're going to use to apply for to, to get your cash from the school. So next, your school will ask you to request for cash. Now, before you request for your cash, you will need to show the school your statement of account, which I just talked about now, which is your proof of fund. If they're satisfied with what you give to them, then they'll issue your cash and you go ahead to apply for your visa. Okay, now I think I'm going to do like a detailed video on how to apply for your on how to apply for visa but let me know if you would like me to do that video or not but i think it's going to be helpful to some people because i know that a lot of people usually give it to agents not to spoil work for these agent guys but i really think you can actually do it yourself because i did mine myself and it was very stress-free and hassle-free so you might want to try to do it yourself okay so, yeah moving on next step after getting your cast is to go ahead and apply for your visa now after visa application you have to go for your biometrics your biometrics involves you doing like a capture and then thumbprint and also dropping your passports when you get to tls tls is basically the center where you go to like instead of going to uk embassy you just go to tls and then whatever it is that goes on there, they transfer to UKVI, right? So it's like TLS is like a like middle is like a middleman between UKVI and you, the visa applicant. So there's TLS Ikeja and there's TLS Victoria Island. I really don't know the difference between the two, but I used TLS Ikeja. Now, when you get to TLS, you can either use the self service. Or the assisted service assisted service is basically allowing them to upload all of your documents all of the visa documents so like I said I'm going to probably do a video a separate video on how to apply for your visa but when you get to TLS you're going to have to apply you're going to have to upload some documents so assisted service which I did is basically allowing the officials to help you upload your documents while self-service is uploading the documents by yourself when you get to TLS, you upload your documents, you do your capture, you do your thumbprints, and then you drop your passport. And from there onwards is between you, UKVI, and God. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, that's like the those are like the major steps on how to apply for masters in the UK as an international student. It's not it's a very tasking process right it's straightforward it's easy but it's mentally tasking because uh, there are like lots of i don't know but it's just understand me when i say it is easy but at the same time not easy so you might want to be strong you might want to put yourself together because it's going to be like a very rough couple of months because i think the application takes between four to six months if i'm not mistaken right so yeah when your visa comes out you can either do the priority visa or the standard visa priority visa takes five working days and the standard visa takes 15 working days when your visa comes out you go ahead book your tickets and voila you're in the uk so yeah uh basically i think i've been able to touch like the major parts uh i talked about professional reference and academic reference professional reference is basically getting like a letter from your supervisor at work stating how long he or she, um, he or she has known you for and basically saying nice things about you right and then academic reference is the same as professional reference only that you're getting this from one of your lecturers from your university like where you did your bsc so just in case you might be wondering what those two 
words mean uh yeah so i think um, this brings us to the end of this video please let me know if you're not clear on some things but i really think that i touched the, ba the basic parts because this is like everything that you have to do to get into the uk yeah so like i said i'm going to probably do like a detailed video on how to apply for your visa and uh so yeah thanks for watching guys and i will see you in my next video bye I look at you and it's easy to see You are that someone I've been trying